All right, very good. Hey, everyone. Hello. If we have never met before, my name is Luke. And hello to those of you who are at our campuses for Lifeline. Uh, I'm excited for week two of Good News. I think it's going to be a helpful conversation for you. And I want to start just by asking you, do you ever find yourself in situations where you feel misunderstood? Anybody here and at the campuses? Like repeated situations. I, I was thinking of this and I, I, I thought of three and I'm sure there's a hundred. But one is I like making jokes. I'm a big joke person. And especially if I'm just meeting someone, I feel like I make a lot of jokes because I want them to like me. It's a problem. No, and uh, I will make jokes, and sometimes it's like they think I'm being serious, and I'm not, and then I just feel like I have to explain the thing I said, and it just feels awkward and uncomfortable. I don't like it. A uh, second scenario is uh, I have a, almost a four-year-old. Uh, he's like three and a half. His name is Oakley, and something you need to know with kids is like if you set, talk about anything in the future, and it's not happening like in the immediate future, they will interpret it like it is. And so, for example, I could say something like, hey, Oakley, maybe someday we'll go to a water park. And he'll be like, I'll go get my swimsuit. And I'm like, no, maybe someday we'll get to go to a water park. Yes, I'll go get my swimsuit. We're leaving. And then all of a sudden he has swimsuit on and boots to get out to the car. And I'm like, you don't get it, kid. Okay, I don't talk to my son like that. Uh, but by far the worst one is when you're greeting somebody and you're trying to decide to give them a handshake, like it's a business meeting, uh, a high five or a hug. And if you mess that up, it's bad. It's a day ruiner. Uh, for me, one of the things I like to do, and this is where I really feel misunderstood, is I like to start with like a handshake, not like a hello, but like a, a hand, I don't wanna call it a hand grab because that sounds creepy, but you know, holding the other person's hand and then hugging them, do you know what I'm talking about? And what? A dap up, a dap up sure, a dap up. I'm learning things today. Uh, and then the other person is like, get that out of here, come on. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Sit down, let me explain myself. I was grabbing your hand and then I was gonna give you a hug and then I feel like a total idiot for breaking it down for them like play by play and I just feel misunderstood. Ugh, it's worse. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. I hate it. Anyways, that's all, no. Uh, tonight, uh, we're, the reason I brought up like times where you feel misunderstood is because tonight in the story we're gonna look at in the Bible, Jesus, is severely misunderstood. Uh, and we get a glimpse into some of the misunderstanding of Jesus when he preaches uh, to a group of people in a synagogue. Now, these people were not like strangers to Jesus. In fact, Jesus was misunderstood in the story by people who likely saw him growing up as a kid. People whose uh, sons and daughters probably played with Jesus when he was a child. People who witnessed him growing up, because these were people from his hometown. Now, we're in week two of a series about the gospel, the good news, that uh, Jesus came and lived a perfect life and died a death that uh, we all deserve for the, the bad that's in our life so that we could, by following Jesus, by having our faith in Jesus, have a relationship with God forever. And in this, in this series, there's bound to be, when, that, when the topic of good news comes up, when the topic of the gospel of Jesus comes up, there's bound to be people who feel, have had experiences where the good news doesn't really feel like good news. And there are two people I want to talk to tonight as we walk through the story. The first is uh, the, the people who would call themselves Christians. The people who say, yes, I'm following Jesus. Because in this story, the people who misunderstand Jesus are the people that hung out in synagogues. The, the people who misunderstood Jesus and even get angry at Jesus are the people who uh, we would have considered, you know, in, if you will. I also want to talk to the people who have felt a little, I don't know, turned off by Christianity because of how someone in the church has treated you. 
My, my hope is that as we walk through how uh, the people in Nazareth misunderstood the good news, we would get a glimpse at just how good and how much uh, beyond us this good news really is. And so my prayer for us is, as we get started is just that uh, whatever it is this conversation needs to be in your heart and in your life, maybe some changes we need to make or evaluations we need to make about how we're living would just be clear for us as we walk through God's word. So this specific story of Jesus uh, coming back to his hometown takes place in Luke chapter four. If you have a Bible and you want to follow along, Luke chapter four. Um, and like I said, Jesus is in his hometown and he actually is, uh, he's preaching. It's Sabbath, people gather in synagogues. Someone unrolls a, a, a scroll from the Old Testament and then uh, shares some thoughts on it. And on this particular day, Jesus is that person. So uh, in Luke chapter four, starting in uh, verse 18, we get a glimpse into what Jesus said on that day. So this is what Jesus said. He unrolls a scroll and finds a place where this was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. So this was a passage that Jesus uh, read, and this is out of, this is a, a quotation, or the scroll was from the book of Isaiah, which was, you know, hundreds of years before Jesus was alive. And so Jesus kind of uh, reads through this scroll, and people were captivated by this, uh, by the, this uh, selection of a passage. It says this in verse 20. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue, synagogue uh, looked at him intently. It's like people in Jesus' hometown are leaning in like, okay, we know that passage from Isaiah. What is he going to say about it? Because that passage sounded like good news. The time has come for uh, the blind to be healed, for uh, the captives to be set free. The time has come for uh, the Lord's favor to be here. And this is what Jesus says. This is in verse uh, 21. Then he began to speak to them. The scripture you just heard has been fulfilled this very day. He's saying this old passage, this prophecy of uh, this, the time of the Lord's favor coming, the, the captives being freed, the blind being healed, all these things. It's happening right now before your eyes in Jesus. And the people in Nazareth love this message. It says in the next verse, it says, uh, everyone spoke well of him and was amazed by how gracious the words that came from his lips. How can this be, they said, isn't this Joseph's son? It's like from our own town, He's speaking such beautiful things that the Lord's favor is going to fall upon us, that we are going to enjoy God's continued blessing in our life. And the Messiah, the one who came, is our hometown hero. He's ours, everybody. And it's like this, this excitement in the air about what Jesus just said. And the reality is, Jesus can see their hearts. Like, he knows some of what was happening in the hearts of the people who were in Nazareth. And it's because of that, he starts challenging them a little bit. It's like they were excited. This is the year of the Lord's favor, all these things. And then he starts pushing them on it to, on something to kind of show some of their misunderstanding of the gospel. Look at this. This is in the next, next verse in verse 23. It says this. Then he said... You will undoubtedly quote me this proverb, physician, heal yourself, meaning do miracles here in your hometown like those you did in Capernaum. But I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his own hometown. Now what's Jesus mean, that? mean there? He said, sure, you're going to say, hey, do miracles. Show us how amazing you are. But Jesus could see in their hearts he could see the, some of the pride and the self-centeredness they had in their religion. He could see that uh, their hearts weren't open to receiving what God had to give them. 
And so in many ways, he's saying, listen, a miracle isn't going to help you. Your, your eyes are closed or your heart is closed to God wanting to move you in a certain direction. You're just excited and impressed to, be, to have Jesus as your hometown hero. And then Jesus actually pushes further. And this is a long uh, piece, but it's important. He says, certainly there are many needy people, needy widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the heavens were closed for three and a half years and a severe famine devastated the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them. He was sent instead to a foreigner, a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Now there's a lot of geography there, but essentially what he says and what he continues to say is there were people, Israelites, God's chosen people, uh, in the time of, you know, back in the Bible times where they would have known, or, you know, like uh, hundreds of years prior, there were people who went hungry in Israel, God's chosen people, while uh, God was blessing other lands, people that the Israelites determined were their enemies. And I'm telling you, the people in Nazareth did not like this message. They go from being excited about Jesus, and then he's declaring the year of the Lord's favor. God's going to start blessing us real big. This is going to be great. And then he says, listen, I'm not going to perform miracles for you. In fact, remember when God would bless others and not Israel? This exposed their misunderstanding of who God was and how God worked and how the, the good news of the gospel was presented. And this actually caused them to go from loving what Jesus was saying to actually trying to kill him. Right there in the moment, they, they all try to get him to throw him off a cliff and by some miracle, he just like kind of weaves or he disappears or something, he does some moves, I don't know, but he gets away and he goes on to his next thing. This is where Jesus was misunderstood by his own people in his hometown. And what I wanna do for just the next few minutes is highlight where the people of Nazareth went wrong or what they believed wrongly about how God was working through Jesus. And like I said, maybe these misunderstandings that they had are the misunderstandings that you have or the ways that maybe you're uh, keeping yourself from sharing about who Jesus is or uh, by uh, having compassion for other people. So the first misunderstanding they had it's simply they have this idea, this self-centeredness, this pride, that it's all about me. It's like uh, they, they loved being the people of Israel. They loved being the people of Nazareth. Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior, is from our hometown. They have this pride that caused them to be full of themselves in their religion. And if you read throughout scriptures, this was a problem for Israel a lot of times. They would enjoy the blessings of God without having any compassion on people who did not follow God. And I guess my question for you as a high school student is have you made God's blessing or your, your religion or your faith in Jesus simply all about you? Just like the people of Nazareth. Have you said, I'm going to enjoy the fact that God loves me, but I'm not going to show love to other people? I'm going to enjoy the fact that I am on the path. I, I, I believe in the right things. I, I follow Jesus. But anyone who believes different from me is a total idiot. We can get in the space where the blessing of God becomes all about us. And in our self-centeredness, we lack compassion for people who are outside of the faith. And maybe if you, wouldn't, if you don't call yourself a Christian, this is what has turned you off to the good news. That you have had people in church make you feel like you're unwanted or uninvited because you don't know all the answers. And maybe that's not how they felt or how they actually acted, but it's how you felt and how you interpreted how they treated you. And that's real. Have you made your faith just all about you? Have you enjoyed the goodness of God without having any compassion on those who don't know God yet? That's one of the mistakes that the people of Nazareth made, had. There was this, this idea that it was them and then it was the outside world and everyone else was an enemy. The second mistake I think they made is that they thought it was all about now. Like, 
When Jesus announced the year of the Lord's favor, the people of Nazareth were excited because they were being oppressed by Rome. They were being occupied by uh, the Roman army, the, the, the nation of Rome. And they were thinking, and they thought this a couple times in Jesus' life, that yes, Jesus is here, the Messiah is here. He is gonna free us of all of our problems. It's all about now. No more Rome bothering us. We're gonna get all of our land back. It's gonna be great. He's gonna come in, guns blazing, and we're gonna enjoy the favor of the Lord. But they were missing something. See, what Jesus came to do was uh, give people access to the holy God. He came to uh, preach the fact that the God of the universe loves everyone and desires that every person know him and have a relationship with him. So much so that he sent Jesus to live a perfect life and die on the cross on our behalf. And that while all the while, the people of Israel and the people of Nazareth just thought it was about that moment in history. They thought, Jesus is gonna save us. We're no longer gonna be bothered by the Romans and we are gonna be freed. And my question for you is, have you made your faith all about now. As in, uh, I follow Jesus so that I can have an easy life. Or I say yes to Jesus so that all of my problems will melt away. I'm sure that we know in this room and at your campus that that's not often how it feels. I mean, if you read through the New Testament, there are letters after letters after letters of uh, Paul and others encouraging people who are following Jesus faithfully to continue following him even in tragedy. Oftentimes we can think it's all about now, it's all about my comfort, it's all about my life being easier or better. And maybe that's how you've misunderstood the gospel. I think these misunderstandings are not just bad for you if, if you've misunderstood it this way, but it's bad for others. Because when I think it's all about me and it's all about now, when I think it's all about me, I will uh, keep the message of Jesus to myself. I will think this is for me to enjoy, for me to rest in, and not for the person that I'm bothered by, not for the people that I don't really like, not for those who disagree with me, not for those who, don't, who I, I just don't think will ever believe. When in reality, God has given us his spirit in us to tell others about who Jesus is. It's not just about us. And when I think the gospel is all about now, I will grow to resent God when I go through hard times. When really what he's promised is his presence through hard times. And so I guess what I've been trying to say in, in breaking down this passage of Jesus in his hometown is just that what Jesus has done is bigger than you and it's bigger than now. It's bigger than just you enjoying God's love because it requires you to be God's love to others, even those who disagree with you. It's bigger than you just thinking, good, I'm, I'm saved, I get to go to heaven when I die and all that stuff, but it's you looking out for the people who are hurting and telling them the good news that we have to offer. And in God's kindness, it's bigger than you, but it includes you. He sees you and he knows you and he loves you and he wants you to partner with him in telling others about his good news. But it's bigger than you. And it's bigger than now. God has compassion for those who are hurting. God uh, has, has a heart that is for those who feel crushed in spirit. But he also has a future hope that one day when Jesus returns, in the new heaven and new earth, God's presence will be among his people and there will be no more crying or pain or suffering. This is his promise. So what he's doing in history is so much bigger than us. We need to share it and we need to consider who are those people in our life that need some good news. And it's so much bigger than now. Times are gonna be tough and God wants us to draw near to him in those moments, but he's also doing something in history by offering us Eternity with him, for those who have faith. And so what do we need to do as we kind of close this conversation? I'd encourage you to consider 
Where have I misunderstood the gospel? Where have I made it just about me and not about anyone else? Or where have I made it just about my comfort, about me feeling good, about me not going through hard times? And I think just identifying it in this moment or as you reflect on this message or in small group will be the first step in maybe reorienting ourselves around what the gospel is. Let's pray. God, I, I, I thank you for the story. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you move. And God, there are people who right now can hear the sound of my voice who, who maybe are feeling like, yeah, I've, I've misunderstood things or I haven't lived in the way that maybe I, I, I thought I would. And there are people in the, who can hear my voice right now that maybe just don't even know what to believe or what to do. God, your love is so powerful. Your love is so good. Your love is 100% for us. And I just pray right now that regardless of, of how we've acted or how we've been treated before tonight, I just pray that you would allow us to see your goodness for what it is that you are so good and so powerful and so loving and that you've offered us new life to the full. God, help this season of each of the people that can hear my voice, this season of their life to be marked by understanding and grasping and celebrating your goodness, both now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.